Hello everyone, my name is Yiding. I'm here to present a topic I'm really passionate about for the past three years. My topic is empowering Chinese international students, rethinking information literacy as academic literacy. So why do I care about Chinese international student? So first off, I am a Chinese international student. I came to America six years ago for my undergraduate education. And because of my transformative experience for the past, three, uh, past six years, I'm very excited to even contribute more to the academic success of all students, including Chinese students. And after graduation, I came to this education consulting company that provides academic and admission services to Chinese student students. And there, I was surprised to discover that China actually remains the top country of origin of internet students in the US since 2009. You can see in this figure that despite of the financial crisis in 2008, there is actually this rapid growth of Chinese students coming to the US. I was even more surprised to discover that there are actually those serious problems of Chinese and students. This is a headline created in, uh, um, I'll do it again. This is a headline in 2015. You can see from the striking headline here, um, there are about 8,000 Chinese students expelled from U.S. schools. This is actually based on a, a survey conducted by my company. And all those striking figures actually indicate the serious academic problems of Chinese students, especially including their academic and underperformance, which means they have low GPAs that they have to be expelled from schools, and also their academic dishonesty, which basically means their uh, plagiarism. So, as a current Chinese student and a future academic librarian, I couldn't help thinking about effective ways to help solve those problems. And also, thinking about all those benefits of better serving Chinese students, I think it's worth striving to emphasize to the higher education in the US that we definitely need to do it right now. So first, because better serving Chinese student students can create this positive peer influence on all students. And second of all, there's this dumb contribution to the higher education because of all the jobs creating by um, we recruit, recruiting more Chinese students. And third, um, there's definitely because of the bad experience of Chinese students and also old students, we're going to ensure there is a sustainability, a sustainable prosperity of American higher education. So I started to look at literature and different research and practices of academic librarians. So what have they been doing about solving those problems? Surprisingly, I haven't found many literature or practices about the connection between fundamental literacy and uh, the solutions to those problems. This is very surprising because fundamental literacy actually is a core idea of academic librarianship. You can see here, um, this is from the Framework for Literacy for Higher Education of ACR, which is Association of College and Research Libraries. So what it says is actually just information literacy is a skill that helps you to uh, discover, evaluate, and use and share information. But if you really look into the definition and what's specified in the framework, we can see there are actually six key elements of information literacy emphasized by the framework. So their authority is constructed and contextual, information creation as a process, information has value, research as inquiry, scholarship as, co as conversation, and searching as strategic exploration. If we look more into those six elements, we actually can see that they are not that aligned well with what Chinese education values. So first off, Chinese education really values wedge exams. As, as a result, the process inquiry as and that is by the framework number two, four, and five, and now really something that Chinese students are uh, educated since they're at primary school. And also, Chinese education really values the authority and set knowledge in their textbooks. As a result, Chinese students might not be very good at critical thinking, conversations, or uh, all other things emphasized by the framework one and two, which is uh, scholarship should be really a conversation instead of just memorizing what your teacher has been saying. And third, Chinese education really values your hard work and personal effort. As a result, those ideas of creativity, intellectual property, and help seeking are really come familiar for Chinese students as well. So what's emphasized in the framework, such as in the frame number three, which is information has value, that requires you to really understand uh, every, so all, all the information really are supposed to 
uh, has their own value and when you are writing a paper, when you are citing other people, you really should give credit to all the sources of your own knowledge. For Chinese students, it might be hard for them to understand that information has value and when you are citing or when you are writing a paper, it's definitely important for you to cite others. And also for the sixth element in the information literacy framework, uh, which is um, search as a strategic exploration, which requires you to ask for help when you encounter any problems or challenges in your research or writing. For Chinese students, they sometimes just think they have to work hard by themselves. They are just reluctant to ask for help for their for professors, which can make it even more harder, uh, even harder for them to. Uh, understand what is plagiarism, how to avoid plagiarism, or how to write a paper in a like ethical, uh, how, how to ethically, ethically cite others. So, if we understand all those um, connotations of Chinese education, we can see that what I just listed up, uh, before about those six frames of the information literacy framework is actually not just information literacy, it's actually academic literacy in a Western setting for internet students, especially from China. So after knowing that it's important for academic librarian to rethink information literacy as academic literacy, I started to do this survey to understand more of the best uh, methods or approach to uh, understand uh, Chinese medicine needs and to better teach them about information literacy. So this is a pilot survey I did uh, last fall. I know this is a small pool of students. I only have 17 students answering my questions. But because of my uh, long time working with internet students from my uh, education consulting experience, and also because my personal experience as an uh, internet student from China, uh, I do think that many of the uh, fan fundings, fundings in this survey are very, very representative of what I'm going to argue in later. So first, from my survey, I discovered there are basically three needs of Chinese student students. So first, they want to get more uh, timely help. And second, they want to get more help from their people uh, with similar background. So it not, doesn't have to be people who speak Chinese or who come from the same country with them. But a, it's better that um, there are people who can understand their special needs or at least some of their struggles or concerns or their reluctance to ask for help, for example. And third, they want more help from their professors. Uh, I see people are laughing about this picture. That's actually a point I want to make about. So this is uh, what I want to say about their reluctance to to ask for help whenever they encounter any challenges in their um, homework or paper writing. Uh, sometimes they think their professors are authority figures, and sometimes they think maybe I'm asking a stupid question, my professor will punish me, or at least think I'm less capable of doing scholarly work. So it's very interesting that they, uh, on the one hand, they want more help from their professors. On the other hand, they're reluctant or afraid to ask for help. And all those things are really worth keeping in mind as academic librarians to help them. And because of that, it might not be that surprising when I ask them about what might be um, the best resources they want when they are looking for help with research and writing. Uh, most of them select the online resources, including website research guide and online tutorials. Because of all those findings, I have those three recommendations. So first, for the online version, because of the previous data I got, I think it's worth creating and marketing more resources available online 24-7, including tutorials, lead guides, and consultation. And third, I definitely recognize the importance of in-person help. So it's always important for professors to also provide all those in-person individual guidance to internet students. So because it's really hard or unrealistic at least to uh, recruit many Chinese speaking faculty or to require professors to have those uh, special like office hours for just for internet students. So I think it's worth training more embedded peer library facilitators or at least volunteers to connect with Chinese internet students. This way you can not only help internet students to connect more with people with similar backgrounds because they are peers and also we can solve the problems of uh, professors not having enough time to uh, providing help to the you know, students. And third, 
definitely also recognize the importance of factories help. So after we have all those useful resources, it's worth reaching out to factory to promote information literacy improvement resources such as uh, all our um, online resources and also the peer facilitators. So whenever professors are now able to provide help to international students or when they find difficulty to difficult to uh, connect to their internet students, uh, they can definitely refer those students to those online resources or at least to those peer facilitators. So here are some examples of what I found online about all those recommendations. This is an example of a lib guide. It's from the um, University of Washington. It's their international student lib guides. You can see here they already have some uh, basic information about where to look for help, uh, some writing and citation help, and also um, some other resources available at the library. Uh, although it's still very simple, I think it's a good start to at least uh, express like a welcoming note to international students that we are here to help you and don't be shy and you're really uh, welcoming and it's very natural that you are uh, asking questions. And I asked about librarians on campus about this is the year of creating more online resources. They're definitely positive about my uh, suggestion. At the same time, they're also concerned about how to make resources most useful to Chinese students. students. To say, uh, by saying that, uh, they mean that uh, after they create all those resources, that doesn't really mean that uh, those resources are visible or uh, are known by those inner students because they might already be reluctant to look for help online. They might not, they might not know any resource available online. To solve those problems, first of all, I, I do want to emphasize that it's important to rethink information literacy, academic literacy. So when we're creating all those uh, resources online, we definitely need to make sure the contents it's directly speaking to international students about their uh, special needs, their understanding of uh, Western academic setting. And second of all, we definitely need to market online resources. And I think the best way to do that is to integrate online resources with in-person reference and consultation and even outreach services. A good example to do that is actually uh, shown here. So this is an outreach example from UIC library. They're doing this launch and learn with a librarian for international students. And I think the best way to promote all those online resources is to introduce not only um, how to find the right libraries or how to ask for research help in the outreach event, it's also worth emphasizing that we have all those online resources and also those 24-7 chat box, for example, uh, when we are doing those outreach events. And in terms of the in-person help, um, the feedback from librarians on campus is also very positive, but they also are concerned about the funding issue. And my recommendation would be, first, we should utilize existing training resources and peer learning facilitation infrastructure. And second, um, because infrastructure might be still costing a lot of money, it's worth thinking about the possibility of creating a volunteer peer facilitation network. So here are some examples of peer facilitation models. Uh, this one is actually from UCLA. It's an AAP, which is academic advanced program uh, at UCLA that provides academic support to Monero students. However, although it's a, this is a really awesome program, it's only uh, for Monero students which are citizens on campus. And I think if we can have the collaboration between uh, those kind of programs and internet services, such as Dashu Center at UCLA, which is the center for internet students, uh, it's easier for us to create those peer facility models serving uh, internet students from China. And also, this is actually the library for peer facilitation models on campus at Powell Library. This is actually me sitting in Powell Library providing research help for students. Um, however, this is because this is a paid job and also we only have limited staffing uh, on that position, I think it worth thinking about the possibility of training more peer facilitators as volunteers. Uh, in your table, I've just handed out a um, mock-up flyer that I want to see in the future happening on campus. So on, on that flyer, there are some information about what high evasion should be happening with the peer resilient model in a volunteer perspective. So here's some progress that have been made and this is on my uh, future plans. Uh, first off, as I mentioned, I think it's important to have those collaborations with uh, different 
centers and programs on campus. I'm right now working with the head of East Asia Library to uh, think about ways to create online tutorials or at least short videos to introduce a uh, basic understanding of the Western get exciting to international students from China. At the same time, we do think it's important to market and outreach to a uh, student's body. So we are work also working in connecting with the Chinese Students and Scholars Association to even more understand their needs and different ways to market our resources. Um, as second, to even maximize the influence, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that all the recommendations I put forward are only, not only for the benefits of Chinese and students, it's also for the benefits of all students on campus. In the future, I want to work with undergraduate students association, Daishu Center, which is the UCLA International Center, a Library Diversity Committee, and other organizations on campus to even more um, scale up all the resources we have created and also all um, the understanding of different uh, learning difficulties on campus. And all those resources we have created for uh, Chinese students can definitely help all the students with a difficulty in understanding uh, what are uh, expected in an academic setting. And that's my presentation. And this is some references. Thank you for your listening. Questions?